Hello and welcome to the Into Pickle YouTube channel, the channel dedicated to your pickleball improvement. My name is Tony Roig, I'm an IPDPA certified master teaching professional and the founder of Into Pickle and with my partner CJ Johnson from Better Pickleball, the VI Pickleball online learning pickleball community. In this video, we're going to be answering your questions about the drop serve with a focus on what's legal and what's not. If you're looking to improve as a pickleball player, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell below. That way you'll be notified when we put out more content like this, all of which is designed to help you improve as a pickleball player. Let's get into it. All aboard! We're going to go through several situations now where I'm going to show you illegal and legal drop serves. That way you can tell whether you're serving legally or illegally or your opponents are serving legally or illegally. Stay tuned at the end of the video. We're going to talk about what you do when your opponents are serving illegally. As the name makes clear, the drop serve is basically dropping the ball, letting it bounce on the court, and then hitting it after the bounce. Most of the issues regarding the legal or illegal nature of the serve have to do with the actual drop motion, so we're going to focus on those first before we move on to other parts of the drop serve and exploring the legality or illegality of the serve. The first one we're going to look at is the toss and drop. So basically that would be instead of dropping it like this, you would be tossing it up and letting it bounce on the court and then hitting it. That serve is not allowed. That is an illegal drop serve. You cannot toss the ball up, let it bounce, and then hit it. You have to literally drop the ball before you hit it. You can toss it and hit it in the air. So if you have a traditional in-air serve where you're hitting the ball before it bounces, you can toss that ball up and then hit it in the air. That's perfectly fine. What you cannot do is toss it, let it bounce, and then hit it off of the bounce. That would be an illegal serve. Another one that seems to be creating some concern out there is the bounce serve. So it's, it's called the drop serve. It's not called the bounce serve for a reason. The reason it's called the drop serve is you literally have to drop the ball. What you cannot do is bounce it. So you cannot propel the ball downward. The rule does not allow you to propel the ball down when you're dropping it. So if you were to push it down like this before you hit it, that would be an illegal serve. You cannot propel it down like this. You have to let it fall out of your hand. Basically, just let it literally drop, sort of Newtonian apple style. You cannot propel it downward to make it bounce up higher before you hit the ball. A related issue, and one that comes up more frequently than I would have thought initially, is can you spin the ball as you drop it? The answer, I think, to that is pretty clearly no, because in order to spin it, you have to propel the ball down somehow. So you have to, to spin it, you have to basically push down on it on one side or the other side to spin it. I frankly don't know why you'd want to spin it before it bounced uh, and you hit it, because you want the spin to be in the paddle, not to affect the bounce and then make it harder for you to hit. But to answer the question, you cannot spin the ball and let it bounce before you hit it. So a part of the drop serve, you cannot spin the ball because you'd be propelling the ball downward. That would make it an illegal serve. See if you can spot whether any of these drops would make the serve illegal. The first one, second one, third one. Any of those illegal? And the answer is no. There's some confusion about the height of which you can drop the ball. You can drop the ball from as high as you can reach as long as you don't push down on the ball, as we mentioned earlier, that's perfectly fine. Some people drop the ball from here, from this height. Uh, that's probably not advisable because of how low it's gonna bounce. So usually a little bit higher for the drop would be better, but you can, you can, uh, hold, you can even be up on your tippy toes in theory and drop the ball from as high as you want and it's still an allowed and legal serve. Let's do that again and see if you can spot whether any of these drops are illegal. First drop. Second drop, third drop. Any of those illegal? The answer is no. You can drop the ball anywhere. It can be on the court, anywhere in the court, or off the court if you want to. So basically where the ball bounces does not impact whether your serve is legal or illegal. Stated differently, as long as you comply with the drop rule that you don't propel it downward or toss it up, the ball can bounce anywhere on or off the court before you serve it. Now let's move on to the next one. See if any of these are illegal. One, two, three. Any of those illegal? The answer is that two out of the three would have been illegal serves if I had hit the ball from, from where I was standing at the time I dropped the ball. 
The first one, I was outside of the lines, and that's perfectly fine. So when I dropped it, if I had hit there, that would have been fine. The second one was illegal because I was on this line when I, when I dropped and therefore was going to hit it. And the third one was illegal because I was on the other side of this line. So there's an imaginary line back here. I was on the other side of it when I dropped and was going to hit it. Stepping on the line can become more of an issue with the drop serve than it would be with the in-air traditional serve. With the in-air traditional serve, usually my feet are set when I'm hitting the ball, when I'm tossing it and hitting it or dropping it and hitting it. With the drop serve, sometimes I'm going to have to go chase the ball before I go hit it. So that can cause me to step on the line before I'm hitting the serve or while I'm hitting the serve, which would be a, a, a foot fault or a fault violation. As you can probably tell, today's a windy day. You probably see me even dropping some balls and having to go chase after them. So what can happen on a day like today, particularly with the winds behind me, is if I drop that ball and that ball takes off that way on me, and if I step in and hit the ball, that would be a fault violation. Not so much a fault of the drop serve itself. It's not a drop serve violation. It's a violation of the, it's a foot fault where I'm stepping on the line as I hit the serve. So if you're gonna use a drop serve, you have to be careful with your foot sliding either in this way or across the imaginary line this way before you hit the serve. If you do either of those, that would be a fault. One other detail about the foot fault rule is that you can step into the court after you've hit the serve. So if you hit the serve, you've hit the serve and then step into the court, that's allowed. What you cannot do is step on the line or inside the court as you're hitting the serve. So you cannot serve like this, but if you were to serve and after serving come into the court, that's perfectly fine. What happens if the ball bounces more than once after you've dropped it before you hit it? Is that legal or illegal? So say you were to drop it like this, it bounces once, twice, and then you hit it. So it bounces once, twice, and then you hit it. That's allowed. There is no rule that you have to hit it on the first bounce. In theory, it could bounce two or three times if it's still high enough that you can make contact with it. Knock yourself out. As long as you keep your foot outside the line, you can hit that serve. It's perfectly legal. A perhaps more pertinent or useful tip that you can use is that if you drop the ball and don't like how it bounces, or like today it's a windy day so it's, it may pull away from me, if I don't like that, I can retrieve the ball and then I can get back in position and start my service motion again and again and again. As long as I complete my serve or I serve the ball within 10 seconds from the time that the score is announced. So if I call out the score 1-1-1 one, 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 and then I drop it and I didn't like the way that bounced away from me, I just grab it nice and relaxed. I get the ball again, I refocus on what's going on, and then I can decide to hit it in the air or I can drop it again. I can do whatever I want uh, as long as I execute my serve within 10 seconds from announcing the score. The key takeaway from this tip is not to hit a serve off a bounce that you don't like. If you don't like the bounce, so you drop that ball and somehow it bounced behind you or just bounce funny, don't hit it. Just grab it. Even if it, if, you, if it rolls away from you, go get it, grab it, come back to the line nice and calm, take a breath, and then drop it again and hit your serve. What you don't want to do is rush your serve. There's no reason to rush your serve because there's no rule that says that you cannot serve it, again, you know, or start the serve again and again and again, as long as you complete the serve or hit the serve within 10 seconds from calling the score. Before I tell you what to do when your opponent is serving illegally, because you know it's gonna happen, let's look at the stroke mechanics of the drop serve a little bit. So basically, once I've complied with the drop serve rules, I'm outside the line, no football, things like that when I serve, there are no, no longer any rules about what I can and cannot do with my paddle in terms of making contact with the ball. As you probably know, with the traditional in-air serve, the ball has to be underneath my navel, underneath my waist, which was, used to be my navel down here, and I, I have to make contact with it down there. I have to be hitting in an, in an upward motion with my paddle, and the top of my paddle has to be underneath my wrist. So this would be an illegal serve in the traditional sense. Hitting the ball up here would be illegal in the traditional sense, right? And coming straight across it like that would be illegal in the traditional sense of the serve, in the, in the traditional serve. With the drop serve, once you comply with the drop rules, you are free to do whatever you want with your paddle angle, with your, you know, being up here, with the ball. If, I don't think it'll bounce that high, but if it bounced it up this high, or if you want to duck under it and hit it, you're perfectly, that's perfectly allowed. The other thing you can do is you can slice it like this. All of those serves, whatever you're doing with the paddle, once you comply with the drop serve rules, are legal, and there's nothing illegal about any of those kind of motions with the paddle on the drop serve. Before we jump into what to do when your opponent invariably hits that illegal serve, if you haven't listened to our podcast yet, Pickleball Therapy, check it out. It's available on any podcast on any podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, any of those podcast platforms, whatever you listen to, it'll be on there. Just search for Pickleball Therapy. You'll see a picture of me and Jill playing on the cover. 
All right, we've arrived at the moment of truth. What do you do when your opponent serves illegally? We've all been on a court with an opponent who has an illegal serve, is doing something that, or is doing something that we suspect is an illegal serve or might be illegal. So what do you do in those situations? How do you handle them? A curious aspect of pickleball that most players are unaware of is that there is no mechanism in the rules for you to call a fault on your opponents when they commit an illegal serve. There's simply no mechanism for you to call a fault and side them out when they're, committing, when they're hitting a serve in a way that you consider to be illegal, even if it is in fact illegal, there's no mechanism for you as a player in non-refereed play to call a fault on your opponent. In refereed play, the referee can make a call about an illegal serve and award the, the rally or the, the side out to the other team. But in non-sanctioned or non-refereed play, there's no mechanism for a player to call a fault on their opponent when the serve is illegal. Because of the lack of any mechanism for you to call a fault when there's an illegal serve by your opponents, my recommendation when you see an illegal serve is to think about it like this. If your opponent is serving in an illegal manner that is significantly impacting the game, for instance, they're serving in a way, you know, in the toss serve where they're hitting it up at their shoulder and they're just, you know, crushing those balls and hitting aces and things like that. In that situation, you can have a conversation with your opponent uh, and explain to them that their serve is illegal. I always suggest taking a quick video of it, having somebody take a video of it, you or somebody else, because it's really hard to eyeball. You know, up in the shoulder is easy, but around the, the navel area or waist area, that's really hard to see. So if you suspect an illegal serve and you want to talk to your opponent about it, the easiest way to do it is to have some video on your phone that you can basically scroll back and forth and show the mechanic, show the motion and why it's illegal. If it's a drop serve issue that's illegal, like a bouncing or something like that same thing be easier to have some video just so you can have a conversation with your opponent about it but I suggest only approaching your opponent if it's materially impacting the game significantly impacting the game uh, if it's simply you know somebody who hits up here maybe they have a, a elbow or shoulder problem or something that makes it harder for them to hit from down here so they hit from up here if they're just looping that ball in the same way they loop it from down here uh, then I would probably leave it alone particularly given the fact that you can't do anything about it anyway other than have a conversation about it so if it's something that's not materially impacting the game you know someone is bouncing it a little bit instead of dropping it and it's not really affecting anything they're still just looping the serve in I'd probably leave it alone that'd be what I would do and that'd be my recommendation if you were to ask me what to do in that situation again because there is simply no mechanism for you to call a fault when there is an actual or suspected illegal serve that's our video on the drop serve helping you understand the legal versus illegal aspects of it and giving you the news that you can't really call a fault on your opponents and maybe some guidelines on how to handle it if you think an opponent is committing an illegal serve when to maybe call them out on it and have a conversation and when maybe to leave it alone and just enjoy the game if you enjoyed the video please give it a like it really helps other players uh, see the video share it with your friends uh, if you like the video they probably will too be well out there